So let's talk, let's go from London to the mean streets of Cambridge, Massachusetts, in the northeastern part of the United States. And let's talk about a study done at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Here's what they did. They took a whole group of students, and they gave them a set of challenges. To incentivize their performance, they gave them three levels of rewards. Okay? So if you did pretty well, you got a small monetary reward. If you did medium well, you got a medium monetary reward. And if you did really well, if you were one of the top performers, you got a large cash prize. Okay? So what happens? They do the test. They have these incentives. Here's what they found out. One, as long as the task involved only mechanical skill, bonuses worked as they would be expected. The higher the pay, the better their performance. Okay? That makes sense. But here's what happens. But once the task called for even rudimentary cognitive skill, a larger reward led to poorer performance. Now, this is strange, right? A larger reward led to poorer performance? How can that possibly be? Fact, money is a motivator um, at work, but in a slightly strange way. If you don't pay people enough, they won't be motivated. What's curious about there's another paradox here, which is that the best use of money as a motivator is to pay people enough to take the issue of money off the table. Pay people enough so that they're not thinking about money and they're thinking about the work. Now, once you do that, it turns out there are three factors that the science shows lead to better performance, um, not to mention personal satisfaction. <laughs> Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. What you see more and more is a rise of what you might call the purpose motive, is that more and more organizations want to have some kind of transcendent purpose, partly because it makes coming to work better, partly because that's the way to get better talent. Um, and what we're seeing now is, in some ways, when the profit motive becomes unmoored from the purpose motive, uh, bad things happen. Bad things ethically sometimes, but also bad things just like not good stuff, like crappy products, like lame services, like uninspiring places to work. That when the profit motive is, is, is paramount or when it becomes completely unhitched from the purpose motive, it just, people don't do great things more and more organizations are, are realizing this and, and sort of disturbing the categories between what's profit and what's, and what's purpose. And, and I think that that actually heralds something interesting. And I think that the companies that organizations that are flourishing, whether they're profit, for profit, or somewhere in between, are, are, are animated by this purpose model. Let me give you a couple of examples. Here's the founder of Skype. He says, our goal is to be disruptive, but in the cause of making the world a better place. Pretty good purpose. Here's Steve Jobs. I want to put a ding in the universe, all right? That's the kind of thing that might get you up in the morning and ra racing to go to work. So I think that, um, that we are purpose maximizers, not only profit maximizers. I think the science shows that we care about mastery very, very deeply, uh, and the science shows that we want to be self-directed. And I think that the, the big takeaway here is that if we start treating people like people and not assuming that they're simply horses, you know, slower, smaller, better-smelling horses, uh, if we get past this kind of ideology of carrots and sticks and look at the science, um, I think we can actually build organizations and work lives that make us better off, but I also think they have the promise to make our world just a little bit better.